Yes, sir. And is the slide visible? Sir, you have to share your slides, sir. Okay. It's being shared. Yeah. Yeah, welcome to this penultimate session of today. The speaker is uh, well known to all of you. He doesn't need any introduction. Anyway, briefly I will tell you, Dr. T. George T. John was the professor of nephrology at uh, CMC Velour for a long time. Presently, he is working in uh, uh, Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital, Australia. He is also working in uh, the Heart Lung uh, Transplantation Center, Princess Charles uh, Sir, Hospital. That is again able to in find Brisbane, out where Australia. the share screen is there. Go to below. Go below. You will find one uh, share screen. The green button. Yeah. You can go to slideshow, sir. That's it, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Georgi is also affiliated to several universities, Queensland University. Still, he has affiliation to CMC Vellore. Today, his uh, talk is on xenotransplantation, a convergence of technologies. As all of you know, xenotransplantation is the most in thing in, uh, transplant in the field of transplantation, not only kidney but also heart. So xenotransplantation is very important because all of you know that transplantation is the basic therapy or the main treatment of choice for any patient with end organ failure. And because of the lack of organs and the burgeoning need for the and the demand for these organs, unless we have some transplantation like a xenotransplantation, we will not be able to overcome this problem. The main obstacle to this kind of transplantation is the preformed antibodies in the humans and also other primates. That's why we are not able to transplant the organs from pigs into humans. This is because of the carbohydrate antigens on them, uh, on the cells in the pig tissues. But now with the advent of this uh, rapid genome editing technology, like the CRISPR and other technologies, this problem has been overcome and the preformed antibodies which will produce a hyperacute rejection to a large extent has been eliminated. In this regard, two teams uh, from United States, one from the New York University and the other from the University of Alabama. Both of them have uh, done this kind of a transplantation, pick to human transplantation a few months ago. I'm sure Dr. John will enlighten you about this new technology, how to overcome this problem of, of uh, hyperacute rejection. Not only that, you have the additional problem of the, uh, the, the, the zoonotic infections being transmitted from pigs to humans. I think he will deal with all these things. This is a very interesting topic and which is the current one. Over to George T. John. Uh, thank you for your kind words of introduction and I know your special connection with xenotransplantation. Unfortunately, your voice isn't transmitting well. I hear a lot of echoes and uh, I apologize for that. Uh, uh, greetings from Australia. I told you all good words no, only, George. Something so has happened that is quite remarkable in the field of transplantation. It is the success of xenotransplantation in 2021 and 2022. As you know, xenotransplanted divine beings have existed in our collective imagination for thousands of years. And from dreams, now we have reality. In 1838, the first corneal xenotransplantation from pig to human happened that lasted for two weeks. About 67 years later, a first full thickness corneal allograft from human to human was carried out that was successful. And about 115 years later, porcine xenotransplantation to humans 
without rejection in 2021 has happened, which is indeed a landmark, and dreams have come true. Xenotransplantation is defined rather broadly by FDA as any procedure that involves insertion into a human recipient from a non-human animal source of live cells, tissues, or organs. And it's been extended to any such tissue of human origin that has come into contact with live, non-human animal cells, tissues, or organs. This is particularly important when human embryos are co-cultured with non-human animal cells, particularly important in in vitro fertilization, where the fertilization rates are much better when there is a co-culture. Unfortunately, then you have a xenotransplant for a baby, even though it's a human baby. This is not currently practiced. Surgeons have for a very long time tried the classical surgical approach of cut, stitch, and see what happens. These two greats have done that too, with some success, Rainsma tried chimpanzee kidneys, both transplanted into humans. He transplanted in Tulane, Louisiana, about 13 patients in 1960s onwards. And of uh, importance, one school teacher lived up to nine months with good function, unfortunately died of diarrhea. And later the great Tom Starsell in Colorado, tried bam baboon liver transplantation with tacrolimus immunosuppression. One patient survived for 70 days. But by and large, this is the end result. Good perfusion, that's panel A, and 10 minutes later, hyperacute rejection. This seems to happen because of HLA incompatibility alone, we thought for a long time. Now we know that it is because of galactose 1, 3 alpha galactose presence that pigs and uh, such animals have which humans and uh, some of the higher primates do not have. So what is alpha gal? It is actually a sugar as you can see on the right side cartoon uh, that is stuck on glycolipids and glycoproteins on cell surfaces that line endothelium in particular humans and the other world primates like baboons and uh, monkeys, gorillas, we have lost that mutation making this particular uh, sugar. And therefore, we find that antigenic when as children, we encounter that in our gut, either as food or as bacteria. About one to four percent of our antibodies are alpha-gal antibodies. Pig suits us well for many reasons. One, it's used widely as food all over the world. They produce large litter of pups, piglets, multiple reproductive cycles, making uh, generation easier. And they are fairly homologous. About 85% of genes are similar. They have only two blood groups, A and O. And with inbreeding, you can produce O group donors, but they have galactose 1,3-alpha galactose, otherwise alpha-gal. And that was a major impediment in tissue transplantation or further experiments. So to make a transgenic pig, one needs to edit the gene, make the gene phenotype, um, genotype favorable, and then print copies with good fidelity, clone it. And if you got these two techniques together, you have transgenic pigs, allowing surgeons to transplant kidneys or heart so far. Now, what is cloning? It's a process of producing identical or virtually identical copies of organism cells or DNA sequences. This occurs naturally with identical twins, and it can be produced artificially as well. Cloning can occur from embryonal cell to embryonal cell if you transfer nuclei, or it can occur from 
somatic cell nuclear transfer to an enucleated embryo if that embryo can be tweaked to grow. This is the timelines in cloning, the history of over 70 years. This business of cloning started in 52 and in initially done in tadpoles and frogs. Embryonic cell nucleus of a tadpole was introduced to an enucleated embryonic cell of another tadpole and that grew to be an adult frog. Subsequently, somatic cell nucleus was trans, uh, uh, transferred to enucleated embryonic cell and that is famously called SCNT, somatic cell nuclear transfer. Early years, it was in amphibia that was easy. And in 1996, somatic cell nucleus was transferred to an enucleated embryonic cell in mammalia, in sheep, famously, we all know as Dolly. We, I have a slide on that, it will explain why that is important. That is the first 50 years of cloning. The next 25 years I've seen somatic cells being reversed to form pluripotent stem cells by Yamanaka cell experiments with uh, particular factors which do it. Again, I'll show you some more detail. Infamously in 2018 in China, the, somebody edited somatic cells in humans to provide resistance against HIV and introduced into a nucleated embryonic cell, produced two to three clones and apparently two or three uh, clones of humans survive in China, but nobody has confirmed it. This particular person eclipsed after these experiments, but I'm told now he's been you know, invited to the Oxford University for a lecture. In 2019, this experiment has been done in primates in Macacus rhesus. And in 2022, China has managed to automate what was a very labor intensive error prone process to an automated process with high yield rate. To summarize, this, uh, this somatic cell nuclear transfer occurs like this. The first animal on the left, somatic cells are taken and it's fused with the second animal's unfertilized egg with the nucleus removed and an electric current is passed so the cell membrane fuses and the fused cells then divide upon implantation into the third uh, pig, that's the surrogate mother to deliver a cloned animal. This is the picture that would show you the timeline from nature, 1952 on the far left of your screen, frogs, tadpoles, frogs, fish, and then on uh, mammals, particularly sheep. And uh, what you are seeing in 1996 is somatic nuclear cell transfer. Subsequently, many species have been uh, cloned, as you can see, pigs in 2000, and cat. That kitten was interestingly called copycat. Subsequently, horses, and with great difficulty, rats and dogs. And as you can see on the far right lower corner, Barbara Streisand, the great singer, had her pet dog, Samantha, cloned to produce Violet and Scarlet. There are three dogs out there, probably one died. That happened in 2018, gaining a lot of traction for cloning. And in 2019 in China, they cloned primates for neurological experiments uh, by knockout gene mechanisms. And the last picture right on top, far right, is the automated somatic cell nuclear transfer just last year, late last year. That is made for the industry because as you know, Chinese eat a lot of pig meat. And this is predominantly for uh, uh, that purpose, but it will come in quite handy as you know, for cloning uh, for medical purposes. Just a slide to show that in Roslyn Institute in Edinburgh, Ian Woolmut and Keith, uh, these are two people who handled, uh, Keith Campbell, who handled the first somatic cell to embryonic cell transfer successfully in mammalia. After something like 300 attempts, they had success. 
donor cell from adult sheets mammary gland replace the nucleus of an unfertilized developing egg cell and the resultant embryo to term in a surrogate. So finally, a mature cell that had developed to perform mammary gland functions reverted to a full sheep. This um, sheep lived for about eight years and died because of arthritis and oncogenic viral illness. This was a worry and subsequently from the same cell line, six more lambs were cloned, they lived healthy lives. Uh, putting to rest worries of clones being unhealthy. This is the Yamanaka cocktail. He produced reprogramming transcription factors as a cocktail with OKT3, OCT34, SOX2, K, and C mic. These tend to reverse the direction of cell development, a dif differentiated somatic cell as you can see on the far right in green fluorescence, change to, sorry, the differentiated cells change to pluripotent stem cells in a Petri dish when exposed to these transcription factors for which this gentleman was awarded Nobel Prize in 2012. So now how do, now that we have seen that you can print with great fidelity, how do you edit a gene to get what we need? There are many techniques, but the first technique in yellow, that is the CRISPR-Cas enzyme system, is probably the best and most widely used enzyme system for gene editing. These two women, Charpentier and Doudna, shared a Nobel Prize in 2020 for making possible the CRISPR-Cas system to be deployed in many, many situations. This enzyme system was described in the 50s by a Japanese biologist, and that lay in obscurity. And this is part of the innate immune system of bacteria to cut out, uh, to recognize old viral infections by storing some memory of viral genome in between uh, palindromic geni genomic repeats and using a Cas enzyme system attached to a guide RNA to locate the same similar viral sequence upon reinfection to delete it instantly. So as you can see on the right, you can see in, uh, uh, in gray color is the guide RNA and on in blue color, you can see the Cas endonuclease that would cut the necessary identified part of DNA. The DNA then anneals itself, or you can insert a gene of interest in that place. So this is a, a cartoon representation of what happens. An enzyme scissor, that is the Cas9, and with an RNA guide strand that identifies the DNA of interest to be cut and removed. Uh, X-ray crystallographic model here, in blue are the two DNA strands, and in orange is the guide RNA strand that one needs to construct to complement the DNA strand of interest, attached to which is the molecular scissors, that is Cas9 endonuclease, that would then do the uh, deletion. With that technology, the lady on the right, Luhan Yang, and under supervision of Dr. George Church, edited out porcine endogenous retroviruses. These viruses have been a huge problem in getting pig to the xenotransplant table because built into pig's genome were about 63 odd retroviruses and there was no way one could remove it. And they were able to successfully edit in a high throughput uh, cell lines, 62 perv gene copies, making these animals endogenously free of viruses that could then replicate in humans. And such a uh, piglet was born in 2017 called Laika after the first dog that went to outer space. Subsequently, 
gal alpha gal gene was knocked out in the pig three genes that subserve that function and gal safe right on top gal safe pigs were created by a particular company we will come to later and subsequently 10 genes were genetically engineered in a transgenic pig which was used for the zeno transplantations that we'll talk about so now which are the 10 genes in the donor pig that have been altered either knocked out that means removed or knocked in or inserted the first four as you can see in the box three genes for galactose one three alpha galactase galactose and one gene knocked out for growth hormone receptor gene because pigs could grow bigger than humans so organs could be uh, out of proportion to human chest cage or need for kidney uh however miniature pigs tend to have similar body weight and the organ sizes should match but for as a good precaution gene has been knocked out uh, for growth hormone in this particular model knocked in were human complement inhibitor genes because complement tends to be activated as you know in hyperacute rejection two anticoagulant genes to prevent thrombosis and two immunomodulatory genes that cloaked possible hla interactions that could occur and free radical injury particularly with the second gene that you can see human heme oxygenase 1 these were selected by trial and there are tds experiments from 50 60 odd uh, possible trans genes of interest perfusion fluid is also special particularly for heart transplants strangely to calm the cells down it needed cocaine and it was hard to get cocaine through to the perfusion fluid in america even for medical purposes so to summarize crispr cas editing modified sequence from a somatic cell somatic cell nuclear transfer into an enucleated embryo implanted into a pig it births a clone and then that clone grows to have a kidney that could be transplanted to a human this is free of viruses because the editing has happened and it has been made compatible the way i mentioned earlier however zoonosis is still a worry so these fetuses are delivered operatively after having implanted into sores the modified embryo in a sterile en- environment and they are isolated for 4 months till they are delivered with cesarean and they are breastfed they fed breast milk in bottles for first 24 hours that seems to be essential and then on on formula feeding sterile periodic testing for zoonosis and for porcine endogenous retroviruses again organs are harvested in single use theaters in the sense that most of the exposed surfaces are disposable and all the ot software is disposable explanted organs are perfused with special solutions as i mentioned earlier who pays for this martin rothblatt has started a she's got a huge company called ut united therapeutics you can buy shares it's an 8 billion venture she has got personal interest in lung heart and kidney transplants and she is one of the world's biggest cloners of pigs and she has provided organs for all the zeno transplants that we know of so far however china is not far behind beijing genomics institute also produces a large number of genetically modified pigs we do not know where they are going yet so how does the renal zeno transplant happen here the timeline for human zeno transplant 2021 and 2022 25th of september the first zeno transplant of a thymo kidney to thigh with 54 hours of observation was allowed in a brain dead recipient they are now called decedent recipients and the second transplant happened at another center on 30th of september again to a brain dead recipient a zeno kidney transplant not a thymo kidney a clinical grade transplantation but not to the thigh but as an intra abdominal surgery where both kidneys were implanted they were allowed 77 hours of observation and the third kidney transplant happened in 
2nd of November, listed and recipient, xenothymo kidney to thigh, and 54 hours of observation. None of them had rejection. On Jan 7th, 2022, which came in all our newspapers, there was a xeno heart transplantation to a living recipient, and that person lived for two months. And in 2022, two more decedent recipients, xeno heart transplantations happened. There was no rejection in the last two transplantations. The first patient died of porcine CMV. Now here comes an important experiment where I believe we have uh, a, a, a Dr. Montgomery's team doing this transplantation in NYU Transplant Institute at Manhattan. It is a gal-safe kidney, not engineered for the other um, transgenes we talked about, made by the company I talked about, United Therapeutics by Ravi Viko. Fixed thymus was implanted on the convex surface of the kidney two months prior, and uh, the recipient was treated with monoclonals more than what we usually do. Anastomosis to the thigh and the kidney was observed for urine output for 54 hours. It remained rejection free with good clearances. There, has, there was no transmission of porcine endogenous viruses or plasmid riboprotein that indicates such infection. The histology of those kidneys from both those experiments looked uh, normal and both kidneys from this black triangle graph that you can see had fair output. Of interest, we have Dr. Vasishta S. Tattapudi, who was part of the team. It's of uh, great pride to us. Now, the second experiment happened, it of clinical grade experiment happened, done by Dr. Drs. Jamie Lockie and Natalie Budd at Alabama University. This was a clinical grade porcine kidney transplant. This is this use the 10 gene altered xenotransplant kidney. Bilateral nephrectomy done in a brain dead recipient and bilateral kidneys were implanted uh, on either iliac fossa then observed for 74 hours. There was no rejection. Vascularity was maintained. However, these kidneys did not achieve perfectly normal function, but both kidneys did work. There was no rejection. The living transplant happened to the man on the uh, bed, as you can see, with Dr. Muhammad Moinuddin on the right, wearing that uh, deep yellow overall and the patient's son standing on the patient's right side. On your right, the picture shows Dr. Griffith, the surgeon who did the human part of the surgery, while Dr. Moinidin did the porcine part of the operation. And Mr. David Bennett lived for two months, but to die later of porcine CMV, or a peculiar rejection which uh, those interested must look up for missing self-rejection mediated possibly by NK cells. Therefore, we may find more modifications to NK cell activity in the next uh, xenographs. This happened on 7th of Jan 22. And subsequently on June and July, there were two more, but both of them did not have rejection. Lots of news and publicity. So where does this all leave us? Xenotransplantation may fulfill the unmet need for solid organ transplantation because of cloning, CRISPR-Cas editing. Editing for gal knockout, immune cloaking so there is no rejection, prevent coagulation by humanizing coagulation genes and complement genes, mitigate zoonosis and scale up production because of need and big interest by business houses. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor uh, George, for that uh, very exciting talk. And uh, 
the way science is advancing uh, and um, I, I'm sure we are not too far away and with the initial successful result of uh, xenotransplant, I'm sure the day is not far off when this becomes, this is going to become a reality and then reduce our waiting period for transplant and probably we'll, we'll have more kidneys uh, for transplantation. So I, I thank you very much for that uh, wonderful talk and wish you uh, good luck and uh, a very uh, wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, no, um, so no questions because he is. How can can you take any questions? Uh, Professor jo George, are you able to hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, but so previously can, I had trouble uh, hearing, but now uh, so, it's a lot clearer. Yeah, if anybody wants to have any questions. Uh, I think you could take them. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments to make? Just one question from my side. So this gene editing and then removing the gal, uh, doing a gal T knockout, that is fine. But has anyone studied about the physiology of the pig kidney and its similarity to the humans, like tubular functions, acidification, sodium transport, uh, EPOs, all these things have they studied in detail about the pig physiology, physiology of pig's kidney? The, the, uh, that question, Michael, I looked at literature access to information. My own feeling is before putting billions of dollars on the line, Revi Vikor probably has studied this sufficiently. They had experiments done uh, and kept kidneys and hearts going in other animal systems in baboons, porcine kidneys in baboons for more than two years, and so on and so forth. I'm sure that there are dissimilarities. Creatinine clearance, people believe, may not be perfect, but clear creatinine after all is only a surrogate marker. So all your questions are valid. We will only know as time goes on as to what level of uh, acid base, vitamin D production, erythropoietin and other unknown uh, functions of the kidney would be subserved by an animal kidney from another world. Okay, um, if there are no more questions, uh, thank you very much once again, uh, Professor George, uh, for that talk. And I think we'll close yeah. this session. I would uh, like to thank, uh, on behalf of me and uh, Dr. Ravi, uh, the organizing committee, for this opportunity. <laughs>